Hi, I'm Dr. Hackey Reitman. Welcome to another episode of Exploring Different Brains. Today we have returning to us Dr. Debbie Jaffe Ellis, who's going to tell us more about REBT and why it is so important. Debbie, welcome back. Thank you, Hackey. Pleasure to be here. It's a, it's a very positive REBT. And yeah. what I like about it, too, is it's not long term. It's like, let's do something positive for you and get on with it. Am I correct in that? You're correct um, that it's short term effective for many, many people. However, it can be helpful for people with personality disorders, you know, people with OCD, borderline, or but many of them would benefit from longer term because the, there's more deeper issues and, and biochemical components to deal with. But for people, I'll have this expression, nice normal neurotics. You know, I, I've done demonstrations of it and within 15 minutes, a person has shared with me or a number of people that, I never thought of it like that. And thinking of it in this new way changes their life. And if now it takes them continuing to make effort to monitor their thinking, to maintain the change, but it can begin in a moment of awareness if a person is willing, again, to think about their thinking and to dispute the unhelpful thinking. And then the good news is, that once one chooses to get into the habit of watching one's thinking and catching the irrational thoughts and, and disputing them and replacing them, over time, one gets into the habit of thinking in rational ways and being able to do what I do, that when I hear the word humiliation, ding, 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 many people who haven't embraced REBT or similar ways of thinking, you know, it would just go by them. So, um, yeah. It's oh, that's great. I've learned so much today. I feel like REBT has really helped me already. And Exactly, because you're open to it. I mean, it takes being willing to be open to it and then to be willing to practice it over time yeah so just to finish off the the elements of rational thinking which are the opposite of of irrational thinking i was starting to say we want what we want we have desires passionate desires but not demands we keep things in perspective we have a sense of humor we don't blow things out of proportion we don't abs think in absolutistic ways or over generalize or think in stereotypical ways we have HFT, which stands for high frustration tolerance. In other words, and I love what I'm about to say with you as a mantra. I, I've used it a lot. I share it with many of my clients and students, encouraging them to think in this way. I can stand what I don't like. I just don't like it. Well, I like that. Yeah, it's simple, but it, it's impactful rather than, oh, I can't stand it. I mean, the reality is if a person literally couldn't stand something, wouldn't they have dropped dead or exploded all over the ceiling? <laughs> they Absolutely. can stand it. We can stand it. We are resilient unless we tell ourselves we're not. Yeah. And um, finally, and this is one of the most impactful aspects of REBT, which is not emphasized in other cognitive approaches. And that is its encouragement to adopt attitudes of unconditional self-acceptance, reminding ourselves we have worth simply because we exist. We don't have to do anything to be worthwhile. Hopefully, we'll choose to do more good than bad, but either way, we have worth. So REBT encourages us to adopt 
the attitude of unconditional self-acceptance, unconditional other acceptance, which is a toughie for a lot of people, but doable if one chooses to and sees the benefits, and unconditional life acceptance. Harkening back to unconditional other acceptance, it's been controversial. Many people say, how can you expect me to unconditionally accept another person who, who has raped someone, who has murdered people, who's acted in horrendous ways? How can you expect that? And here's the response. It's a choice. But if we're willing to contemplate that that evildoer was once a vulnerable little baby too, like you and me, and that if you and I had had their genetic tendencies, their biochemical nature, particular situations in their upbringing, if you or I had been indoctrinated to believe what they believed, had had their adolescence and teenage years maybe being bullied, maybe feeling worthless, if you and I had had their experience of maybe feeling accepted by a group that taught them if you do this, this and this, then you'll get to heaven or, or good things will happen or we will love you more. If you or I had had their experiences in adulthood and had been thinking what they were thinking the moment they did their evil act, then isn't it probable that you and I would have done something like that too? So REBT isn't about accepting bad behaviour and is all for healthy consequences, but to come from a place of rationality and, frankly, gratitude that thereby but for the, the grace of the good fortune in my life could have gone I. And there are many people in the world who demonstrate that unconditional other acceptance and forgiveness is possible. So this isn't just an ideal. It's doable if one chooses to do it. And why would one choose to do it? Because the alternative is living with hatred, and bitterness within, which, you know, REBT, talking about holism, acknowledges the effect on the physical health of unhealthy emotions. And hatred and bitterness can lead to the development of dormant genetic tendencies, cancers, ulcers, diabetes. You as a, an MD would, would know much more about that than, than many of us do. And so... Um, I thought you were going in a different direction with that. I thought you were going more in the direction of um, Viktor Frankl and Man's Search for Meaning when he was moving the bodies around and looking out through the window. And he said, then I had a choice. I could either say, this is all horrible, terrible. Why do you do this, God? And go into a rage, or I can say, but that is a beautiful sunset over there. He didn't get in, you know, uh, uh, which is, I think, different than the forgiveness. Well, I, I didn't get there yet. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, an element of REBT is definitely to focus on what still is good, to accept what is bad, and not either or, both and. REBT is not about putting your head in the sand. Accept what's bad, do what you can about it if you can, but at the same time focus on what is good. And gratitude is an essential attitude encouraged in REBT. I, I wrote an article about it just a few years ago and, and talk about it all the time. Viktor Frankl and Albert Ellis were colleagues and, and very fond of one another, and their philosophies are aligned. So um, you beat me to it, Hacky. Oh, 
Well, that's my big mouth. There it goes again. <laughs> where, where does fear fit into all of this? Well, there's healthy life-saving fear that if, you know, a, a poisonous snake is about to, to bite you, you mentioned it before, the flight or fight. So, but if we're talking about self-created fear that doesn't serve the function of serving your life, then it is one of the unhealthy, paralyzing emotions. And, you know, sadly, what happens with a lot of people before they embrace something like REBT is what I call arrested thinking. It's, it can be, let's say, I'm, a, I'm, afraid of, I'm afraid of being rejected. And so let's say someone has been rejected or thinks they will be, thinks they will be. And there's this, and, and the fear, and the fear, and they don't take it to the next thinking step, which is, okay, this is REBT thinking. Let's say, worst case scenario in this instance, you get rejected. Then what? Oh, it would be awful. Well, it would be very bad, but prove to me it's awful. In REBT, awful meaning the worst that it possibly could be, which in REBT thinking would be death, because where there's life, there's hope. Yeah? And then often people would, would, well, I guess it's not the very worst thing that could happen. You know, and so they think it through. And it's not to make them like something that's not likable, but to take away the fear and the horror of something that frankly is not life-threatening. Okay, the next basic element of REBT is, and I've mentioned this, with awareness we have choice. If we're not aware or, or willing to think about our thinking, the habitual ways of thinking will continue and, and be self-defeating. So with awareness we have choice. You know, there are whole new types of therapy so-called coming up uh, called third wave or four wave and to me a number of them seem like chips of the old block you know without giving credit to the old block from which they came and um, so and this is not to criticize the benefit of any of them and I'm certainly biased but I really do believe that REBT pretty much <clears throat> has has most of the elements that can serve a person pragmatically, behaviorally, cognitively and emotionally and compassionately. So anyway, there's one of the new ones is mindfulness psychotherapy. And I, I think REBT is um, perhaps uh, the original, one of the original mindfulness psychotherapies. Be mindful. Think about your thinking. Be present in the now moment and what's going on in the here and now and how is that serving you and what can you do? So anyway, another basic tenet of REBT is it's not enough to have that aha moment or that awareness, that epiphany. That's the beginning. But then to maintain healthy change requires ongoing effort ongoing effort it's like you know when you were doing boxing and and maybe you you had a really good first game after you 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 did your basic classes but to maintain your gains and to get better you had to keep practicing right so anyway there are a number of similarities i we, i don't think we have time for that because there are other things for us to talk about now but i i, I think i've shared with you now the basic elements of REBT, um, to read more about them, any one of the 85 published books by Albert Ellis, countless chapters in textbooks by Albert Ellis, and um, a number of chapters by he and I um, in more contemporary textbooks, or I've revised and updated chapters since his passing and a book that's just come out 
by he and I, but it's the second edition, so obviously I've done it and updated it. It's called Rational Emotive Behaviour Therapy by Albert Ellis and Debbie Joffe Ellis, just out, just out, uh, published by the American Psychological Association. So it's the second edition. Do you happen to have a copy handy to hold up? There it is. <laughs> and where can people find this book? Well, certainly they can order it through the American Psychological Association online or, or um, can call them. Okay. Um, and hold yeah. it up again, Debbie, because you've just revised it and you've, you've uh, um, and these are theories and this is everything under one roof. In concise form, of course, many of the books that that we wrote and that Al wrote go into much more detail. Um, one of his books, I, I'm looking up here because uh, I have so many of, of the books that he wrote. Or, you know, I used to do research for, for the books that he did in the late 1990s and and um, till his death in the 2000s, he, he died in 2007. He was a lot older than I and um, had, had those many, many books published before we were working together on his writings. But anyway, if, if someone wants a simple, concise primer, and what we won't have time to do today, Hacky, is for me to describe the, the cognitive, behavioral, and emotive techniques but they're mentioned in that book and, again, in many of the books that Al wrote. And how do people get in touch with you, Debbie? Anyone who wants to learn more about what I do and, and where I'm presenting can look at my website, www.debbiejoffeellis, as one word, dot com. Can you discuss for us how you navigate between holistic and traditional medicine from your unique perspective? Well, I, I don't think it's all that unique. I, I think uh, many and growing people have come to uh, embrace this view, which is there, there is a, a vital need for elements of traditional medicine. If you break your leg, you know, thinking right won't heal the bone, but thinking in healthy ways might strengthen your immune system and facilitate better healing. But we still need our surgeons. We still need our cancer specialists. Many people still benefit from elements of traditional medicine. But that alone, according to, to REBT and the way I think, is one wing of a healthy flying bird. And so by thinking in healthy ways and creating healthy emotions and then adopting practices from what's called alternative healing, um, such as yoga, and meditation, and a therapeutic massage, and healing oils, and aromatherapy. You know, there's a scientific basics, basis to all of those. I'm not talking namby-pamby superstitions here. I'm talking about ancient traditions that in the early development of traditional medicine, one enhances the other, and the element of creativity, music, and art as healing forms, as healing modalities. It's such a, there's such a richness before we human beings. And it's a shame when there's a smorgasbord to say, I'm only going to eat that, when we could have that and this and this and this and have a richer and colorful and healthier life. Well, that's very well said. And we want anyone watching this, if you have any medical problems, consult the professionals. Yeah. But I don't think it's, uh, I agree with you, it's not an either or, it's take the best of all worlds, the best that we can do. Yeah, and many 
specialists or, or MDs who are primarily of the biochemical bent do now increasingly encourage patients to take on some of the holistic elements I mentioned. Um, you know, the, the Aussie actress and singer Olivia Newton-John um, is a, is a um, survivor of cancer. And even now, according to what I've heard, she's uh, working to heal herself from a new bout of cancer. But she's done a lot to um, increase the awareness in people of the benefit of holistic healing along with traditional modalities. And in the Royal Melbourne Hospital, I believe it is, or it might be the Royal Children's Hospital, one of the main hospitals might be another one, actually. Forgive me if I, I haven't got the name right. But one of the, the main hospitals in Melbourne, Australia, has a, a section now where, for holistic healing and meditation and so forth. And many of the hospitals I've heard of here in the USA and here in New York have classes of meditation and other forms of, um, of self-healing and awareness. And you know, you, when you shuttle a bit between the United States and Australia, um, and with your entire background, what would you say that someone like myself who's never been to Australia doesn't get about the biggest difference between there and here as it applies to what we're talking about today? So what I'm about to say is, is an overgeneralization because there are individuals here and there to which it doesn't apply. And REBT cautions us you know, um, to, to watch out for any tendency to overgeneralize because that can, can give us a misperception and, and not help. Generally speaking, Australia has free medicine provided for all free medical care. Um, it's a continent the size of the USA and yet with the population of New York State spread around. <laughs> so it has literally more space. It has certain conditions that that facilitate education and flourishing and growth. Um, and so again, this is an overgeneralization. A number of Aussies can tend to be more easygoing and less prone to stress than some, not all, Americans who live in, in intense, fast moving cities. But Really, I, I want to conclude my response to that question by saying each human is an, is an individual with choice. And no matter what your culture, upbringing, the positive and the negative circumstances, if we're aware we have a choice, we can choose to be easygoing. No matter how intense our surroundings, we are not victims of our environment or the people in our lives unless we tell ourselves that we are. Is there anything we have not covered that you'd like to cover? You've covered it with your excellent questions and giving me the space to speak. I think we've covered a lot. Um, I, I would like to emphasize again the importance, especially at this time, of tolerance, which comes from making the effort to have unconditional acceptance of others. Others who have political beliefs we may not agree with or certain people in positions of power politically or in the work environment or family members. The expression hanging on to rage or bitterness or hatred is like eating poison and waiting for the other person to die. And so we're hurting ourselves. We're not even hurting the person that, that we dislike, you know. And so to choose 
to create a climate of tranquility within us that can only be created by thinking in healthy ways. Because life will contain loss and suffering. That when we think in healthy ways, we minimize the emotional suffering, which means we liberate more energy for joy. Well, Debbie, it's been another great episode with you here. Thanks again for coming back and telling us all about REBT and how we can make our lives better through it. Thanks for all you're doing and hope to see you again soon. I look forward to that. Thank you, Haki. Exploring Different Brains is a production of Different Brains, Inc. For more information, visit us at differentbrains.org.